Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we've been looking at more prayers of the faith, and this time, St. Augustine's prayer to our Almighty Father. It's been claimed that this prayer was written by St. Augustine, which, if true, would make it around 1,600 years old. It's sometimes recited as part of a novena to honor the most holy face of Jesus, and at the very least is a traditional prayer of the Church. Let's take a look. Almighty Father, come into our hearts. This doesn't refer to our physical hearts, but to our minds and souls, and it doesn't mean that God wasn't there previously, but that he should exert more of his influence over our minds and souls to accomplish more good things through us, like, And so fill us with thy love, that forsaking all evil desires we may embrace thee, our only good. Not that desires themselves are evil, but that we can, by blindly following those desires, be led into sin. For instance, the sin of bank robbery is committed when a person wants financial security or some other thing that can be bought with money, which leads them to believe that they desire money, which is also not an evil desire, which leads them to believe that they want to rob a bank. All sinful acts committed because of desires are, in reality, separated from our real desires in a similar way to this. What this section of the prayer is requesting is that we be given the means to turn away from desires that, if acted upon, would lead us to do evil actions. It also recognizes that, in the end, all truly good things derive their goodness from God, who is the source of all goodness. Show us, O Lord our God, what thou art to us. We often fail to understand that God is the true source of all the goodness in our lives because that relationship is invisible to our senses. Here we ask that God will show the truth to us about how much good he really does for us. Say to our souls, I am your salvation. Speak so that we may hear. Similar to the last sentence, except that it places stress on yet another essential quality of God, that no one can be brought to heaven without his help. Jesus explains this in Matthew 19, 25 to 26. Our hearts are before thee. Open our ears, let us hasten after thy voice. We request that God will give us the ability to clearly hear his call so that we can obey it. This may also be a reference to John 10.27, in which Jesus says his sheep know his voice and follow him. Hide not thy face from us, we beseech thee, O Lord. Please don't be ambiguous about where you are and what you want us to do. Open our hearts so that thou may enter in. Make us receptive to your call, so that you can do even greater good things through us. Repair the ruined mansions, that thou may dwell therein. This sentence may have a few different meanings. It very likely is referring, at least partly, to the sinful human soul as a ruined mansion, which means that the repairing of the mansion would be the purifying of the human soul from sin. St. Augustine also lived in a time when Rome had fallen victim to raids, he was alive during the sacking of Rome by King Alaric and his Visigoth warriors, so it's safe to suppose that many of the houses in Rome had been damaged. St. Augustine blamed this on the fact that the people of Rome had been lukewarm in their acceptance of Christianity. This sentence could be seen as a request for God to assist with repairs to mansions, both physical and otherwise, so that God would be glorified by more of the people who live there. This could also be interpreted as a more general request for God to help people with their troubles so that those people would recognize him as the only true God and turn to Christianity and away from sin. There are many ways to look at this sentence. Hear us, O Heavenly Father, for the sake of thy only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We request that God will listen to our prayer because of Jesus, who died for us, who lives and reigns with thee and the Holy Spirit, Jesus has been resurrected from the dead and is therefore now alive and, along with the Father and Holy Spirit, ruling in heaven. One God, now and forever. Amen. A statement that these three persons form one trinity, and they always will. So, this is a prayer requesting that God will make us more aware of him, his presence in our lives, our need for him, and the good things he does for us, while also acknowledging the Godhood of Jesus and the existence and authority of the Holy Trinity. The prayers and songs we've covered in this video and in other recent videos are only a small selection of prayers from church tradition. Please let me know if there are any other prayers or religious songs that you'd like to see explained or analyzed. However, there are songs which can also still be used as prayers to God, 
and which existed even before the birth of Jesus. That's why in this next season, we'll be looking at some of them. Next season, the Psalms, part one. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.